D. Gordon has been suspended 80 games for PED use. Gordon said in a statement that he made a mistake and accepts the consequences. Josh Raven has been suspended by Major League Baseball 80 games for violating the league's performance-enhancing drug policy. It's hard to believe you're doing something wrong when everybody around you says it's right and there's no other way that you're shown. I was an untouchable. For more than five years, she willingly took anabolic steroids for strength and the blood-boosting substance EPO for endurance, all of it directed by her Russian coaches and medical staff. I want sports to be fair. If somebody wins, I want him him or her to be real hero, not not a fake one. Did you ever use HGH? Uh, I put that in my cereal, man. Okay, so you used it all the time. That was in my cereal. I mean, that was like, uh, come on, HGH, yeah. We're talking about the difference in making $30 million or getting a real job and, 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 and working and, and making $60,000. What, do you let the guy next to you take him and you're not going to take him? Hey, the bottom line is right now in baseball, crime pays. The incentive to cheat outweigh the possible risk. In 1979, Heidi Krieger was 14. She was selected to become part of the communist East German athletic system. She would compete in track and field, and she would win medals. There was no choice. Sent to a special school for young athletes, she was just one cog in what was already a burgeoning and very professional effort to show the world that young communists would rule more than the planet. They would be the greatest athletes anyone had ever known. At the 86 European Championships in Athletics, Heidi Kruger won the gold medal in shot put. Her winning throw of almost 70 feet was the stuff of super beings at that time. The track and field community knew little about Krieger, or little they would say out loud, that Heidi Krieger was indeed the poster child of a system bent on winning at any cost. From the age of 16, Heidi Krieger was scientifically altered by the East German athletic program with the full support of the government. Without her knowledge, after all, what does a young teenager know about such things when they are plucked to be a star and told it was all for the glory of her nation? In the year of 1986 alone, one year, she was injected with almost 2,600 milligrams of steroids, and her life, as it might have been, was over. By 18, she was developing male characteristics that could not be reversed. Despite her desire to remain female, she was forced to undergo gender reassignment surgery and became Andreas Krieger. In 2004, Andreas admitted he was glad to become a man, but being shot full of hormones without his consent deprived him of the right to choose when and where. To this day, he suffers searing pain and at the age of 50 can barely exert himself under any conditions. Krieger's story is just one of thousands in Olympic lore, mostly on the communist and European side of competition, where doping and cheating to win medals and fame remains a way of life. Russia is at the core of the cheating, running perhaps the most systematic and sophisticated sports doping program in the world, where those involved in the fraud have come clean, helped investigators latch onto a number of athletes who cheated at the 2014 Sochi Games and others. Drug cheats are an integral part of not only the Olympics, but Major League Baseball, pro football, college sports, right down to high school athletics here in America. So maybe the time has come for some drastic action. Welcome back. The man who invented the concept of covering the intersection between sports and business, the sports professor, Rick Caro. Rick, it's a serious subject that we're on right now, and it's not just all about sports. It's about cheating. It's about doping. It's about people basically like Lenny Dykstra saying it's all about making money and nobody else being to make the kind of money that I can make. Rick, you and I have talked about this many times over the years. Is it not time to do something harsh at this point? Either shut down programs that cheat that come in the Olympics, kick them out of the Olympics entirely for one, two, three, four games, or maybe it's time to get rid of the Olympics altogether because outside of FIFA, they may be the most corrupt sports organization on the planet. Well, listen, the bottom line of all of this, Ed, is that it really does depend on each individual sport, the athletes, in the stick and ball sports in the States. It's been negotiated. Some sports are doing better than others. But the Olympic sports adds an element of nationalism, jingoism, whatever you want to call the ism. And so, you know, the Russian track team, the Kenyan track team combined 27 medals um, in, in, in Sochi from their respective events. And now they may not go to Rio. So the bottom line of all of this is you have the incentive to win individually, and then you overlay on top of it the collective nationalism and you have a very very difficult formula we get all that but then i want to go back to the point though 
The Russians have cheated years, decades. Others are cheating. Is it not time? Look, even when some baseball player is caught recently, I said it's time to kick him out for the year. Not just 80 games, because it's a cheat here. But specifically on the Olympic stage, we have international competitions aplenty all around the world. If the Olympics are going to be this corrupt, let's get rid of them. Well, you know, to get rid of the Olympics is, is to ignore, I would say, 80% of the goodwill, the people who are willing to follow the rules. Unfortunately, the ones that win the most medals seem to be the highest visible, and those are the ones who were, rewarding, were rewarded for cheating. Uh, I will say the spotlight now in the next couple of months shines brightly on two very big programs, Kenya and Russia. And if they're both suspended from the Olympic Games, as we think they might be, it's an entirely different answer to your question. So uh, I would say talk to me middle of July, and I may have a different answer. But isn't it proper, though? And again, I know that this is an opinion based at this point. If you're going to cheat, you're out. End of story. We caught you. There's no doubt about it. Why do we let these cheats? Why do we let these cheats stay in any sport, much less the Olympics, baseball at all? You cheat, you're done. Well, you know, the zero tolerance policy happens after uh, warnings. I guess in our justice system, we temper the fact that cheating is, is terrible uh, against or on the opposite from America uh, is a country of second chances. So second chance, third chance, fourth chance, you know, Gordon, 60 games. Uh, it's a suspension for half a season is huge. It is a big signal. And these guys making $17, $18 million a year, that is big. So, you know, if, you're, if you kick them out forever, that is the next step. There are uh, penalties under the collective bargaining uh, agreement in each sport that basically says you can be expelled from the game, but you've got to get there based on four steps or five steps. Maybe too much, but that's what it is. I only got a minute left. We're going to go to some phone calls here, but I'm just going to keep you for one more minute. I just got to ask you, Jim Craig, the 1980 Miracle on Ice goaltender, is selling all of his gear. He says he wants to take care of his grandkids and his kids right now. He could make $5 million from this sale. I mean, we can talk about business. The business sense is smart. Why not get your family to use some of that money? It just seems so tough to see somebody like that selling off historic gear. Well, it is. And listen, uh, Ann Myers, uh, well, you know, Don Drysdale's uh, stuff, when you look around some of the Hall of Fame uh, processes, you see that, that uh, it isn't very valuable, but money is valuable. Some people, look, everybody does it because they have no alternatives. It would be nice if there were a way where the USOC or others could buy it back, put it in trust, yeah. and sell it back. What do you think? Just out of, idea. I, I, it's a great idea. Just out of curiosity, the American flag draped over his shoulders, the uh, jersey he wore during the clinching game over Finland, or the gold medal. Which one would you want? I want all three. <laughs> no, you got to pick one. Uh, the, the flag over his shoulder. There you go. Okay, I, I think that's got to be first. The medal, and by the way, the medal's valued as much as $2 million. You have that in pocket change, don't you? I, I have that in pocket change, uh, yet when we go to dinner, you're paying for the next dinner. <laughs> you always say that. You always try to get out of the dinner, no matter how you can. Rick Carl, always a pleasure, my friend. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll continue this conversation as we go on. one eight seven seven newsmax one eight seven seven newsmax We've got about two minutes. you got something to the point of what we have talked about here tonight. Now's your time to get in be part of the conversation. Two minutes you get to go. Joey, Lunenburg, Massachusetts. What do you got, Joey? Welcome to the hard line. Hi, Ed. You went way ahead of me on that subject matter. But I just want to say, you know, the, the media, okay. the Western media, got right on Donald Trump over his tweet about that jetliner. I did. Going down. I did. Uh, and, I, and I did. And I think it should. I think he should be criticized. Here's my point, Joey. Hear me out. 627 yeah. in the morning, Donald Trump brought terror into this. Nobody right. knew any evidence. We had no facts. We had nothing. All I'm saying is, let's take a moment breathe joey don't go ahead and say this because we don't know i don't think it's fair we have too many people who are trying to be the first one to tweet or get it on social media right, let's just right. say the plane is down 66 souls are dead before right, we right. start to trade on terror on this let's just back off and wait don't you think it might be better just to wait a little yeah, he, he could have waited, but you know, the, the Western media, uh, the jetliner that was shot down over the Ukraine, they were blaming Russia, ba, 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 and it wasn't. It was actually a, a jet out of the Ukraine, supposedly. I mean, the, the Western media is so against Russia. I, I, I get that, and, and Joey, I, I think we agree a little bit on this, is because 
there's a great chance it is terror. It is a bomb. We know that, right. but we don't know the facts and the evidence yet. Let's right. just right. wait, not try to be first to get in there. That's my only right. point. Joey, thanks a lot for the call. Good to hear from my old home in Massachusetts. Jewel from Kentucky. I got 30 seconds. Jewel, go. Okay, Ed, you asked what I thought about the sport and, and their drugs and all this. I think that they should be barred. I do not think they should be allowed to play. If they are caught, if it's baseball, football, but what's your favorite sport? Real quick, your favorite sport. I don't. I, okay. I, I don't <laughs> care. I mean, but I'm with you. Not. I'm with you. If they cheat, if you're going to be honest about it, be part of the sport. Get in there, compete, and do it on what God gave you. Otherwise, if you cheat, you're out. Jewel, good call. Thanks a lot for joining us. From the terror tweet to a blatantly racist and sexist political cartoon, and also a couple of words on a gentleman that I admired and so many others did as well. Curtis Sliwa and your phone calls are coming up next right here on The Hard Line.